In this video, we'll build a XAML control template to format how we show the month, day, and year for a blog post. We'll also build a set of styles to customize the appearance of our app bar and the items page grid. Let's get started. In your Windows blog reader project, select app.xaml file. Just go ahead and double click it to open it. We're going to be working within the XAML view. Now let's zoom to 140% and right underneath the style for Windows blog background brush, but still within the resource dictionary is where we're going to define our control template. Let's start by adding the control template element. So this element, like we've done before, we're going to add a key. And in this case, we'll call it date block template. And within the control template, we're going to define a number of things to visualize the date time similar to the blog. Within the control template, we'll define a canvas control with the height of 86 and the width of 86. And we'll set the margin property. Starting at the left will be 8, top 8, right will be 0, and then another 8. And we'll also set the canvas to be aligned to the top left by setting the horizontal alignment to left and make sure that the vertical alignment is at the top. Now within this canvas, we're going to define a number of controls. Just so we can easily follow along, let's get out of full screen mode and look again at what we're going to be formatting. The first text block will be the month, and that'll be here. Next, we'll display the date and then finally the year. So let's get started on the text block to display the month. Set the text block here and set text trimming equal to word ellipsis. And that'll basically stop in case it, the, it goes over the container uh, by each word. We'll see a dot 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 if there's is multiple words set here. Now for text wrapping, we want no wrap. Set that attribute. We'll set a couple more here. The width we'll go ahead and set to auto, as well as the height, which will auto size based on what we're setting within the text and the other style properties. In the margin property, starting on the left, we'll go 8, 0 on top, 4 on the right, 0 on bottom. And we'll set the font size equal to 32 and the font weight of bold. Now within this text block, we're going to set the data binding to point to the publication date and pass in the converter parameter of month. We'll set text block text property. And within here, we're going to set a number of things, including our binding, of course. And the specific path, of course, is that pub date, which represents the date time. And now we're going to set up our converter. And that converter is the, the one we built before, which is the date time converter, which we defined as a static resource just above here called date converter. date converter. And the one thing we need to do here is pass in the converting parameter, which is the convert parameter. We're going to pass in month. And that'll return a string formatted as a month with all caps of the first three letters of the month. Now that we've set the binding, let's just close our tag and we're going to add a new text block. Let's just delete this extra line here. And right underneath the first text block, we're going to add another text block. To, and this time, we're going to be displaying the date. So let's add a text block element. And within here, we'll set a lot of the same properties that we did before. Text trimming equal to word ellipse. This time, we'll set text wrapping equal to wrap. And we'll also set the width and height. We're going to hard code the value of the width to 40. 
and we'll set the height to auto. And we'll set a margin value here of 8 to the left and 0 for all the other sides. And this font will be a little bigger. This time we'll do a font size of 34. And we also want to make sure the weight is bold. And we'll also position this text block within the canvas to be 36 pixels from the top. Now we didn't do that in our other text box. And by not setting the canvas.top or canvas.left, this property, the month property, started at 0, 0 in the corner of the canvas, which is fine. But the next one, we need to be able to specify. Otherwise, these two text blocks would be right on top of each other. So let's add a closing bracket here. And within our text blocks, we're going to set the text property and set up the binding. So we'll say text blocks dot text. Within here, we want to be able to set up our binding like we've done before. And the path will again be the publication date. And we'll select the converter attribute and set this just like we did above to the static resource to the date converter. Now, like we did above, we need to pass in a converter parameter. But in this case, we're going to set the converter parameter to be the day parameter. Let's just close our tag. Now that we've set up the month and date block, let's look back again at the model we're trying to copy. And we'll notice the next thing we have is a vertical bar. So we are going to add a line in between the date and the year to represent that vertical bar using a line element. Let's go to full screen mode. Let's add the line value. And let's get out of the text block. And what we'll do is add a line. And we're going to set a couple of different attributes here. One is the stroke. That represents the color of the line, which, as you may remember from that image, was white. And we'll set the stroke thickness, which is how thick we want our line to be. We'll go ahead and set this to 2. Now we need to be able to say where this line is going to go in an x, y coordinate system. So to begin with, we'll start at x1 equals 54. And this is a vertical line, so we're not going to change the values within x. And we'll say x2, the end point, is also going to be at 54. And this is going to be a vertical line, meaning we're going to move across the y-axis. We'll say y1 equals 46. And y2 shows our big move, and that's where the line ends at 80. And let's close our tag. And what we're doing is drawing a vertical line from 46 to 80. Now let's jump back to our design. And the last thing we want to do is add that 2012. Let's jump back into Visual Studio. And let's add a new text block. We'll say a text block. And we want to make sure the text wrapping is on. We'll set the width equal to 20. And we'll set the height value equal to auto. And that'll give us a thin width, but it'll automatically resize based on the height. For the font, we're actually going to use a predefined style and static resource. And this is the control content theme font size style. And I'll show that in just one second. And like we did with our last control, we're going to be setting the canvas.top property. And we're going to set that to 42. And we're also going to set the canvas.left property. And this will start 60 pixels from the left. And we'll set up the data binding just like we've done before on the text property. And within here, we'll have a binding. We'll have a path. And the path is to the same data, which is the publication date. We're going to use a converter just like we've done before, setting it at the static resource. And the name of the converter is date converter. And we're going to use the converter parameter. And this time, the parameter is going to be called year to format it to a year. All right, let's exit full screen mode. We'll hit Save All to make sure that we've saved. And next, we want to open up the split page.xaml file. 
we'll go to split page and just go ahead and double click on split page to open that up. Now let's zoom in here and I'll zoom to 140% and just full screen this. And previously we built a default list item template. Now what we want to do is be able to do a couple things here and set up the template to point to the date block template that we just built. To kind of eyeball where we are, let's go ahead and just click run so you can see what we're going to be doing. We'll select a blog and we're going to be changing this template. And in particular, we're going to be replacing this image with the date block format that we've built before. So back in here, instead of an image, go ahead and make sure that you're selecting the entire image and go ahead and click delete. And we're going to replace that gray image with our date block template control and we'll say content control. We need to point to the actual template for the control that we've built and that's a static resource in that app.xaml file and we called it date block template. Now with that built, let's make sure we add an end tag here. Let's go ahead and exit full screen, run our app and we see Ooh, this nicely formatted value. And it's very close, except we still got to make sure that the green shows from the blog page. So let's switch back to Visual Studio. And now what we want to do is just format and get that green color in our application. Now what we want to do is change the background of the border. So to do that, we're going to change, make sure that we have the border selected. And we're going to go into the Visual Studio properties in here. And I'm going to just start typing back and I'll zoom out real quick. We see that we have a background property. Now make sure that you're selecting a solid color brush because we want it to be a solid color. And you'll see that we actually get a nice editor and you may have to scroll on this side here just to scroll down. And you can select a color but really what we want to do is borrow that color and we can use what's called the color eyedropper. And this allows us to say switch to Visual Studio and uh, the best way to do this is I'm going to set this up here and uh, set up Visual Studio on one side. We'll select the color eyedropper and once the eyedropper is over that color green, go ahead and click it and what we've done is taken the hexadecimal value for that color and set it automatically. This is a great way to be able to reuse colors when you see something either in an application, on a web page and so on. So what's actually happened is that we've set the background equal to that hexadecimal value and just if we click run, now we'll see that it's formatted just like the web page. Next we're going to format the title, the author name and also remove the publication date. So let's switch back to Visual Studio and within our XAML, let's select the title, we're going to remove the style property and instead replace it with the font size. And first, let's make sure that our Visual Studio ID is not running. Jump back. We're going to delete the style and in instead add the font size. And the font size we'll use is 26.667. And of course, you can do this and change this as you like. We'll set the text wrapping property instead to wrap. And we're going to add a couple more things here. We'll set a max height of 72 pixels and we'll also set a, a different foreground color and you can of course experiment with some of these pre-built colors or use the color picker as you see. In this case we're just going to use a hexadecimal value and for the author what we want to do is replace the text wrapping and the style and we're going to put in a font size for the author of 18.667. And lastly, since we already have the publication date, we can go ahead and safely just select the entire text block and delete that. And let's save. Now to finish styling the split page, we'll need to change the background color of the app bar and the color of the selected item in the list view. To update the app bar background, let's go to our app bar element and what we're going to do is go out of full screen and, and for example if we have the word back typed here, we see the option for setting the background and we can add a value directly here and look at what our value is. In this case we're going to make sure that it matches the blue that we used in some of the earlier files. 
so that the background for the app bar and the background for our application match. Now that we've changed the background color for the app bar, we're going to switch to the app.xaml file to override one of the default styles for the selected item in the list view. Let's select app.xaml file and just go ahead and double click it to, and make sure that we're in the XAML view. We'll full screen this and go to the very bottom of our resource dictionary and we're going to define a couple new styles. In this case we'll add a solid color brush and because we're trying to override one of the default styles and standard styles we're going to use the exact same name which is list view item selected background theme brush and what we'll do is just define a color and we'll set that color to a hexadecimal value here and like we did before with our solid color we jump out of Visual Studio and we type in the property color in the search box and we can actually visualize exactly what that hexadecimal value is now let's add one more in here we'll full screen and we'll add the key this time the key is going to be list view item selected pointed over background theme brush list view item selected pointer over background theme brush they get paid by the word and in here we'll add another hexadecimal color and this time this hexadecimal color will be ff 384A72. And we'll show that what that looks like in just a little. And our last solid color brush that we're going to be replacing. And this one is list view item selected pointer over border theme brush. just like above that will have the same value so I'm going to copy paste and let's make sure to end our solid color brush so just a quick glance at what that color looks like it looks like that so real quick we can jump out and see the differences between these two colors just by mousing over and having the color selected here to see the color changes as we mouse over and uh, click on each of the different solid color brushes. Now that we're done making changes to these templates, let's go ahead and click Save, and we're going to change to the Items page. So double click on the Items page to open it. And within here, let's go ahead and just zoom in a bit. We're going to look for our page.resources, and we're going to add some styles to this page. So go ahead and just jump in right after the app name. We're going to add some styles. The first one, we'll add some comments here will be a light blue solid color brush. Let's define a solid color brush and the name for it will be block background brush. And we'll set the uh, value for the color 557EB9. Now that we've set the light blue color we're going to set this, some styles for this grid. We're going to set the style for two text blocks represent the title description and we're going to add another data template to represent the grid item template. So the first one will be the style and this specifically maps to the grid title text style. The target type here is a text block that represents the title and we're going to use the based on to inherit values from the basic text style and within this style we're going to define a couple of different properties by using the setter tag property equals and the property we're going to set is the font size and we also want to set the value for that font size. We'll just set the value 26667. 
and we'll have another setter here. And this time we're going to set the margin. And the value for the margin will be 12 to the left, 0 on top, 12 to the right, and 2 on bottom. So there's our title text style. What I want to do now is add another style. And this style is going to represent the description text style. Description text style. And just like before, the target type is also going to be a text block. And we'll use based on, and it'll be based on, just like our last one, the basic text style. Now within here, we'll set a couple different properties. So let's set the properties here. And we'll use a setter property. And this time, we're going to set it to the vertical alignment. We're going to set the value of that equal to bottom, meaning our text will be on the bottom. And next, we'll have another setter for the property. And like we did before, we'll set the margin property. And this time, we'll set 12, 0, 12, 60. So 12 on the left and right, and 60 from the bottom. And that defines our grid description text style. Now, the next thing we're going to do is define a data template. First, we'll set the key value to default grid item template. Now, within the template itself, we're going to define a grid and set a number of the different properties for that grid. So, first, we'll set off the horizontal alignment equal to left. And we also want to set the size for this. So, we'll set 250 and also set the height to 250. Now we'll just scroll this up to the middle of the page, and we're going to add a couple more controls. First is a border control. Now the border control is going to use a background, and it's going to refer to a static resource. And guess what? We're going to use the static resource that we defined above called block background brush. So we'll copy and paste that and set that as the solid color to use for our border control. And let's add an end tag to our border. And we'll add a couple more text blocks to display the title and the description. Let's add the text block. And we're going to bind the value of the text to the title. And the style we're going to use is the style that we defined a little earlier, which is the static resource and the grid title text style. So I'm going to copy paste here just to make sure we have the names right and set that value. Same thing with description. We'll add a text block. This time our binding statement is going to go to the description. That's the description of the blog. And we'll set a static resource as well. And this time, we're going to use the grid description textile. So we'll just copy and paste it from above here, and then add the end tag. The next thing we're going to do is define a stack panel. And our stack panel is going to be aligned vertically to the bottom of our 250 by 250 box. And what we'll do is make sure that the orientation is set to horizontal. And within our stack panel, what we're going to do is set one more property, and we'll use the standard style property for the overlay that's used in the grid view. To do that, just like before, we'll set the background to a static resource, and this time we're going to use the specific style named list view item overlay background theme brush. This will give the contents of our stack panel a nice overlay appearance. Inside the stack panel, we're going to have two text blocks. One text block is simply going to display the text last updated. The other one is going to be data bound to the publication date. Let's set the margin for our text block. Here, 12 on left, 4 on top, 0 on the right, 8 on bottom. And we also want to set one property, which is the height. And that's going to be 42. Our next text block, 
we're actually going to do some data binding to the publication date. So we'll set the binding to pub date. And like we've done previously, we'll set the converter to a static resource and point it to the date converter. And we won't pass in a parameter, so that way it'll return the short date format. One more thing we want to do here is set a margin for this. 12 on the left and right, 4 on top, 8 on bottom. And at this point, we've defined our data template for our grid. Now let's go to our grid view control. That's the item grid view control. And what we're going to do is change the item template property. Now you can do this in XAML if you want, or you can also come out. And because we have defined this as a local view, you do need to set the design view to be able to set this in the property window. And if I zoom in on the properties window, make sure you have the item grid view selected and just start typing for the item template property. Click the property marker under local resources, you'll see the default grid item template, which is the template we defined. And now we can switch to XAML view and we can see that this has now been updated with our default grid item template. All right, we've spent a lot of time actually designing some styles. Let's go ahead and click F5. What we see is our new style, and we define that grid. We see the title, we see a description where available, we see the overlay, and that last updated text with the short date format. Mm -hmm.